to the whole free world, the stunning news has come that Franklin Roosevelt is dead. Death in the hour of victory, like President Lincoln before him. He is beyond party, he is beyond faction. He is in the hands of history. It will remember the young governor of New York in 1929. It will remember the ailing man who helped sufferers like himself. It will remember the swift tide that made him president in 1933. Young, vigorous, the man of action. A new spirit in a Harris land. The beacon and hope for millions. Like a real landslide this time. I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the... When he took the oath of office that blustery March day in Washington, it was in the midst of a dark time for his country. The banks were failing, farms were in ruin. An army of hungry men walked in the streets looking for work. But the new president, with wisdom, with firmness, with humanity, with a voice that rang from corner to corner of the land, took hold, inspired faith, and turned the tide. He had hours also for his mother, who still lived, for his grandchildren, whom he loved dearly. For a second term, he was elected by an overwhelming majority. In 1941, with tyranny astride the outer world, he was elected still again, an honor given to no other man in his country's history. But for England, for the free peoples in desperate straits, he was the same hope he had been to his own people eight years before. In this historic crisis, Britain is blessed with a brilliant and great leader in Winston Churchill. knows better than Mr. Churchill himself that it is not alone his stirring words and valiant deeds that give the British their superb morale. The essence of that morale is in the masses of plain people who are completely clear in their minds about the one essential fact that they would rather die as free men than live as slaves. They need tanks and guns and ammunition and supplies of all kinds. From America, they will get tanks and guns and ammunition and supplies of all kinds. <laughs> 